Hey everyone, today I want to discuss some fashion mistakes that a lot of us are probably making right now or have definitely made in the past. Of course, fashion is a form of self-expression and personal style, but we should all recognise that there are certain choices that might not be the most flattering or comfortable for us. With that in mind, I'll be providing suggestions and alternatives if any of the points that I raise in today's video sound familiar to you and you're looking for answers. Number one, not dressing for your body type. The first mistake is not dressing for your body type. We all have different body sizes and shapes, and it's important to choose clothes that flatter us each individually. If you're wearing clothes that are too tight or too loose, you may not be showing off your best features, which could leave you feeling fed up and disheartened. For example, if we look at these two outfits, they're both wearing the same style of skinny jeans, but it looks to me like they don't quite fit the guy on the right. He looks a little uncomfortable and it seems like he'd probably be better off in a more relaxed pair of pants to balance out his silhouette a bit more. Some of you may argue that they don't look good on either of those guys because skinny jeans are trash, but that's a totally different video. Most of us don't have the perfect physique and height that we see on models, so it can be difficult to use them as inspiration because we don't know how those outfits are actually going to look on us. It's best to take an honest assessment of what your body type actually is, and then you can begin to narrow down your search by finding celebrities or influencers who have a similar body type to you. You could even go one step further and start taking measurements of your body so you know exactly how pieces are going to fit you. This will then help you to find clothes that you know are going to look good on you. You don't even really need to refer to that body type diagram, which is something I've talked about in the past. Just get comfortable with your main features. Are you tall, short, skinny, wide? There's no point trying to dress like someone or in a certain style if it doesn't suit your body type. Celebrities and some influencers have stylists doing all the hard work for them, finding specific pieces that will suit their body type. And sometimes the clothes they're wearing are tailored specifically to their body, which is something you could also consider, especially for pants, because it's fairly inexpensive. Number two, clothing with logos or branding. Bold logos or branding can be a matter of personal preference, but it can come off as a little flashy and attention seeking if not done correctly. You can get away with it with things like vintage band t-shirts because that's a timeless style. Certain brands can get away with big logos, but it's rare and even then it needs to be incorporated properly into an outfit, otherwise it can get really tacky really fast. Nine times out of 10, if you opt for pieces with subtle branding or logos, it's gonna look so much better. So you can still incorporate branded clothing into your outfits without it being too distracting. There's a reason why those Supreme Box logo tees are so much more desirable and sought after than the rest of their t-shirts. The subtle branding in the center of the chest is so much nicer and more versatile than an all over print tee, for example. And this sort of thing becomes amplified when you start thinking about buying into higher end fashion brands. Yeah, you could go and buy this Saint Laurent tee for 269 pounds. It has a kind of cool graphic on it, but you're probably gonna be bored of it after what, two or three wears? We all know the better piece is this subtly branded tee. It looks so much classier and you're gonna be able to wear it time and time again with lots of different outfits and it's not gonna get boring or if it does get boring, it's gonna get boring a lot slower. Number three, not accessorizing. Accessories can add a lot of interest and personality to an outfit. They can range anywhere from rings and necklaces to hats and key rings. I consider accessories as another form of layering. Little hints of a pearl bracelet or the shine of a gold chain can make people think you've put so much more effort into your outfit than you actually have. It's something a lot of people don't bother doing, but once you start doing it, you'll realize you can make the most basic outfits seem elevated just by adding in a few accessories. If we look at these two photos side by side, what's the difference? The t-shirts they're wearing are both the same sort of fit and price, but which one looks better? It's this one, right? Because he's accessorized with a chain and cap. Despite the pieces being virtually identical, 
He's just styled it better by adding accessories in. But if you want a more understated look, you can still accessorize in different ways. You could consider sprinkling in different textures or even colors into your outfits. This could be achieved through the fabric of your clothing, like a chunky knit sweater or a patterned shirt. Number four, not incorporating sustainable fashion into your wardrobe. Sustainability is becoming an increasingly important concern in the fashion industry. No one is saying you need to become completely carbon neutral overnight. That's totally unrealistic and is probably never gonna happen. But we can all do our bit by attempting to change our buying habits over the next few years. That might involve cutting down on the amount of clothing you're buying each month and realizing you don't have to chase every new trend. You could try supporting more homegrown brands. There's hundreds if not thousands of small brands out there that are producing high quality pieces using local resources rather than outsourcing abroad. You could consider investing in high quality timeless pieces that will last for years to come. This way you can still invest in the fashion industry without contributing to fast fashion which is sometimes, but not always, lower quality and goes out of style quicker. If you want to get really deep into it, there are a number of websites that track the sustainability of a number of big brands, so it's worth checking out. But if we all do a little, nobody has to do a lot. Number five, not experimenting with new styles. Whilst having a personal style is important, it's highly recommended to not be too rigid and step out of your comfort zone every once in a while. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as a Grease style makeover, but playing with new styles can be really eye-opening. You may discover something that just suits you so well, and all of a sudden you're feeling really comfortable and confident in your clothing. For example, if you've worn fitted pants all your life and you're feeling a little uninspired, try going for a relaxed straight leg. If you've only ever worn sporty shoes, try a pair of boots. If you're always wearing color, try going monochrome. You don't even have to go all in. You could consider incorporating small elements of new styles into your existing outfits. This could be achieved through accessories or statement pieces, like a bold new jacket or a unique pair of sunglasses. The best place to be is to find a base outfit that you're really happy with and then keep tweaking it to keep it fresh. This is also a great way to save money because you only have to buy one or two new pieces each season to give an outfit new life. And so there are five fashion mistakes that you might be making and some ways to fix them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra.